In this lesson, I'm going to show you all the things that we're going to be building, why we're building it, and lay a plan so that way we could put it into action for the rest of the lessons, including introducing some core concepts. The first core concept I want to talk to you about is what is a client portal? The thing that we're going to be building in this course. And why is it important? Well, client portals are used all the time for business use cases or external use cases. Really what it's meant for is when you have data that you want to share with very specific people in a very specific way for like stakeholders, employees, clients, etc. Client portals allow you to build that experience. So this is very important because if we have a lot of data in an SQL database or a HubSpot database and we want to share it with maybe a contractor that's coming on board or a client, we want to share only very specific data with them. And software allows you to build a beautiful interface to share that data with them to make it really easy. So that's what a client portal is. Now, there's another thing that I want to introduce you to, and it's the concept of user groups. In this course, we're going to have two user groups. So with our first user group, we have our clients. And in this course, we want them to be able to securely log into the portal. We want them to be able to add tasks to projects and upload files. We want them to be able to download files from projects and tasks. We want them to be able to comment on tasks and then finally view and download invoices. Now, this is the functionality that we're going to build for our clients, and it should give them a great amount of ability to collaborate with us back and forth. Now, on the other side, the employee, the admin side, the ones that are really setting up this experience for the clients, they're going to need a bit more functionality. So we want them to be able to securely log into the portal. We want them to be able to add and edit clients and create client details. So if they need to add a client and then add the details for the client, we want them to be able to have those permissions. We want them to be able to do the same thing with projects. So create, edit projects for clients. If a client has a new project that you're starting for them, their employee should be able to create that project for the client and do all that laborers work to get the client set up for success. Next, we want them to be able to add tasks to projects and upload files. So as the employee and the client are collaborating back and forth, the employee can work hard to add the task, keep the project management up to date to make sure that they're collaborating in a good and efficient way. We want the employee to be able to download client files from projects and tasks. So if a client shares their brand guidelines with the employee, the employee needs to be able to see that brand guideline and download it for their use so they can use those brand guidelines in all of their work. We want them to be able to comment on tasks. So if they need to collaborate or ask questions back to the client, they can do that. We want them to create and edit invoices. So once their service is completed, they can bill them for the hours that they worked uh, and have an internal invoicing system there. And finally, we want the employee to be able to delete things, whether it's clients, projects, tasks, invoices, or resources. As the manager for this experience, they need to be able to delete clients that maybe are no longer their clients or delete data that maybe they uploaded in mistake. And so this delete functionality is reserved specifically for the employees and not the clients. And so that sums up this lesson. We have our two user groups. We now know what a client portal is. And we're going to get on to our next lesson where we talk about structuring our database for the first time. So I will see you there.